Oh, here we start. We got it. Wait a minute. Um, do we have it or not? No, this is this is well, Jesus. I'm gonna try logging in from here. Well, some of the people. Okay, here we are. All right. It seems to have lost Dave Green. But these are the people we had before. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys hear us? Can anybody hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I can't okay. see you. All right. You can't see us. All right. So <laughs> let's go to the external monitor here. Oh, Missy Owl is still on. Here, wait, wait a second. I gotta okay. first make sure we on it. No, we're good. We're good for that. All we have to do is start it. Oh. Okay, there it is. Okay, good. Oh, Dave. Yeah, what happened to Dave? We can see you. Thank you. Yeah, good. So that was our yeah our generator test came on just as we were no just as we were getting ready. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Send Dave a note here to log back in. So apparently, some people in the legislature want to make hybrid meetings mandatory. After the end of March, we should invite them to one of these. <laughs> Do you want this to happen every everywhere across the Commonwealth? Well, really. yeah, I think if we're saying that um, the public like it because they can get into more meetings without having to come to a site, right? But that doesn't have to be hybrid. It could be in Zoom. We could just keep having right, Zoom yeah. meetings forever. Yeah, but there's a lot of people don't like the Zoom meetings and don't come to meetings if they're only Zoom. Like how? <laughs> yeah, group yeah, yeah. Right, but I don't think there are as many of those yeah. as people who come yeah. just because they can. Yeah. On Zoom. <laughs> the one that I was on. Okay. Uh, maybe we should start the meeting. Yeah, we'll so maybe we we'll have a uh, we have a forum. Uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> Why don't you tell who's here so the people watching us can know All right. who's here? Yeah, can okay, you so. pull, up, pull us up on the street? Um, I can try. I think if I click. Oh, it's the view. It's the speaker. All right, so just we'll get started here. Um, in the room down. here is uh, Terry Smith, John Kinder, Howard Kinder. Uh, <laughs> John Gorey, <laughs> Mark Rivers, which was losing his mind, uh, uh, Catherine Hilton, and Mary David. Uh, and you guys can see who's online. Uh, and we only were missing that was here previously was Dave Green before the generator kicked in. Uh, well, let's just assume he's going to get back, get back in. in. Yeah. All right. And we are recording. That's great. That's good. All right. So, um, I have I emailed everybody their agendas or the agenda online. Um, and so the first item on the agenda is review of the minutes from the January 24th, uh, 21st meeting. Uh, I don't have copies of them here. Uh, but uh, does anyone have any comments on them? Looked okay to me. What? Looked okay to me. Okay. I move we accept them. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. So we're accepting the meetings as written. And if anyone sees any changes that need to be made, uh, you know, you can just pop it to me in, uh, in an email. Um, so the next item on the agenda, which is an important one, is a discussion of the notice of intent and the orders of conditions for the 
for next year's uh, winter lake lowering. Um, and I asked Mary or, uh, or Miriam uh, to kind of give us an update on the CONCOM's current thinking. Uh, I know there was a discussion at the, um, at the select board meeting, which I wasn't able to attend, uh, but I'm gonna turn it over to either Mary or Miriam. So Miriam, you wanna do an update? Sure, un sure, unless you wanna do it, Mary. Go ahead and I'll just add in. Okay. Um, you didn't hear anything back from the select board yet, did you? I was at the select board meeting and they didn't make a decision, but we discussed it. Okay, that's right. Um, so this is a complicated situation. Um, the notice of intent, the CONCOM did discuss at our last meeting and um, my sense in the, was that the commission was recommending, my recollection, not the sense, was that the commission was recommending that the town submit a new notice of intent because of all of the different issues involved that need to get straightened out. Was that your recollection, Mary? Yes. That, and that was the discussion at the select board meeting for the whole thing. Um, and it's in their lap now, but I do think the recommendation, that they, they heard the recommendation from everybody that they submit a uh, notice of intent. Yeah. Now, how, how they choose to do that, they didn't decide. The two uh, intersecting issues, which I do have an update about that I can share with LWAC, um, is that as you recall from the previous discussion, it um, I was told by DEP that the dam requires a chapter 91 permit. This is a separate issue because this is permitted through the waterways program at DEP. And that permit requires that there be a notice of intent and an order of conditions. So our current order of conditions does not cover the dam for year round operation. So um, I think that it's going to mean that the town is going to need to submit a new notice of intent that includes year-round operation of the dam and water management at the dam in addition to the winter drawdown. And um, I followed up with DEP to find out what that meant. And they said it could all be bundled into one notice of intent rather than having two different permits it could just be that one permit covers year-round management of the dam and water levels including the winter drawdown and then that order of conditions could be used to get the chapter 91 license no i'm sorry not license permit there are two different things permits and licenses for this dams require a permit from DEP. Terry is asking to be recognized. Terry. Terry. Hi, Marianne. How are you today? I'm fine. I have a couple of questions. Um, the information that you're getting, um, is that coming out of um, the regional office or have you spoke directly with um, the water waste program regarding the license? I because it, in well, it was from, it was from the waterways program. I forwarded the email that I received to the select board, and I think I forwarded it to Mark as well. Didn't I include you, Mark? I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so it was from Waters Way, Waterways. Okay, as it relates to the structure, because <clears throat> the licensing of structures um, that began in the 1970s, so about a hundred years after or more after the dam was built. Um, so there are provisions in the Wetlands Protection Act um, under 10.53 that talk about late drawdown, um, maintenance of dams, operation of dams, um, which exist before the Wetlands Protection Act and being viewed as limited projects um, by the issuing authority, which is the town's conservation. Um, so that was one thing that I just wanted to point out, um, because I run across this quite often with many 
many structures that existed prior to licensing just in what I do for work. Um, that being said, um, the operation and maintenance of the dam itself um, as part of the dam inspections that would have been done by Morris Group and what the Office of Dam Safety would have on file when you do a dam inspection, a, com a big component of that in some of the initial and preliminary um, studies that go into the H&H &H studies for the dam is actually requires as part of the inspection and operation and maintenance plan. So that might be something that, you know, Walter, um, some of the documents the town already has on file um, that might be helpful for the commission and helpful for LWAC to provide the advice on, on this. So, um, so I think that those are some things that could be helpful. Um, when I was in attendance of the last conservation commission, um, you know, it's clear Mark on behalf of the town in the past to file the paperwork. Um, and that seemed to work okay. So Mark withdrew the um, request for an extension um, during their meeting. So that leaves the board of selectmen in the town now with the decision obviously is to come up with a new notice of intent. And I brought up the point that I think that where we are in the crossroads of Walter having retired, um, the need of the commission for a new notice of intent uh, and or new order conditions and some of these issues that Morris Root, the current dam inspector with him retiring, that in where we stand as advisory committee to the board, it'd be my recommendation and I look for a motion on this, is that as the initial um, task of a new dam safety engineering company that is part of their task, that they would actually be the ones that would prepare the notice of intent. So because of what I heard in the Conservation Commission meeting and the questions involving dam analysis for ice loading, H and H studies, a lot of this information probably already exists in the reports that more through. So, but I think an initial way to get a new engineering company involved in this when Morris retires, um, where if Morris does the dam inspection before the end of June, that would allow the dam, the next dam inspection wouldn't really need to be done until 2025. But it would be helpful for the late drawdown and what the commission's asking for is for the town to select a new engineering company to serve as the dam engineer. And for them to be the ones to file the new notice for the town. Meaning this year? Meaning this year. So get a, get an engineering company on board, um, you know, go through the RFP process. Morris has provided a list of potential consultants who he would recommend. There's several local walks, but the services that are gonna be required for this, um, if there's a wildlife habitat study that needs to be done, uh, the environmental, um, the analysis, um, any of the things they can take Morris's reports, they can review those without and, and, and take the information that's already available. But you're going to be looking at a consulting services, and what the town should be looking for is consulting services that are in total. They can take care of the wildlife aspect, they can take care of take care of the, the structural analysis. They can take care of if there's a permit that actually needs to be obtained from. So you're gonna be looking at a larger consulting company and, than what Morris was as an individual. And I think that the companies looking through the list that there's, there's some very good companies that are on there 
that have those in-house capabilities. They deal with the regulations and stuff all of the time, but that's going to be the most expedient uh, in, in that process. Um, that's just kind of, you know, based upon my experience. So I mean, I, I've done game inspections in the past and I know what's required of them. I know that an operation maintenance plan, maybe people who haven't paid attention to it, but it probably already does exist within the MC and in the records for this game. Mark, 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 since you are taking notes, do you want to have me moderate and call on people so that you don't have to follow um, that? Uh, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, we'll talk to you, uh, tag team here, yeah. Okay, so Mary wants to speak. So I, I just want to point out to the committee that there is no current dam inspection on file. I think hearing with the last one was 2014. What? 16. No. 2016. 16. It's done for, and, and you did bring that up and we had discussions several meetings ago about this, that Walter, in more in a conversation with Morris Root, that there was one that was done in 2021. It's okay. there, like I said, it's not currently on file anywhere. So well, that needs to be sorted out by the town. But my understanding, we had this conversation and said it was there. But if you go to the dam safety office, the dam ID number is here. And they'll have everything on file, but it's not just it's looking not, at it's the, not on file with them. That's what I'm saying. No, there there is damn stuff that is on file with them. I'm, I'm sorry, could I um uh, could I make a comment here? Yes. Yes, I I, I communicated with the Office of Dam Safety and they confirmed that um that the town is not up to date and that they do not have a dam safety report filed since 2016, which, um, you know, even if there was an inspection done in 2021, you know, that was still five years. Um, so, so it was already three years out of compliance at that point. But I understand with the pandemic, probably a lot of things got delayed. But um, yeah, there, there's some things involving structures in the league that through executive orders and different things that have been extended for periods of up to five years. I mean, I just got something for, you know, from, from, from my dock structure, from waterways themselves to find, you know, which clearly define, you know, Mr. Smith, you don't need to renew your license next year because of this executive order, this executive order, this executive order, you'd be good for another five years. But presumably we didn't get such a letter to the well, you don't, you might not get the letter, but those executive orders might be in place, which allow for, I think, you know, for things that have been put up. But anyways, there was discussion on this several it, meetings ago. It was my understanding that the 2021 report was that we did compound, did, did get a copy of it, because that's where the maintenance requirements were defined. And that's how we knew about you know, re relocating the weir and pointing and replacing the pointing. So there, I believe it's in sort of someplace, but even without that, Morris is supposed to have the 2023 or this report done very, like right now. Uh, I sent a note to Becky and, and I don't know if we received it yet, but um, it, it, we're going to get this latest report. There's no question about it. Uh, and and she should, should be dated little should, they should have her already, but maybe not. But whether there's one on file, whether there's not one on file, the town's gonna need a new, new dam safety engineering company, and they should be initiating the process of of selecting a company to do that. And the initial task in would be to do the notice of intent. Morris Root does the, before he retires, does the dam safety inspection. That carries it forward for a couple of years with the town. And, but the new dam and safety company can become familiar with all of the history of the dam, including the operations and maintenance stuff. That's probably if you went back before the dam was done, uh, recon, 
repair that would exist. And all of the studies and everything that would have had to go into that, that Morris Loop did in order to make sure the spillway capacity was adequate, the outflow pipe design, all of that can't be designed without doing that and having that information. That information exists on and that would be helpful. And then the new company can comply with the conservation mission and get this in the works. So you're suggesting that we, that we, oh, the motion is to recommend to the select board that they hire a new conservation company. Based to put out a, a new request, request for, my recommendation would be to, to it, that LWAC, it advised the, the select board to review the list of dam safety engineering companies provided by Morris Rude. Yep. So that that company could be brought on board in the upcoming fiscal year, FY24. And their initial task would be to draft a new notice of intent related to the lake drawdown and operation and annual operations of the day. So we would technically so we're just you're suggesting that Morris still do the 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 June inspection. Yeah, and at the same time, we have another company on board to kind of maybe work together with Morris. Well, Morris done a minor standing from the last meeting Walter attended was that Morris will be retiring at the end of June. Yeah. He was going to do the report, the report before he retired. So as of the end of this current fiscal year, June 30th, the town won't have a damn seat. How about we so the, how about we have a second on this motion so then we can go on to discussion with the board. Okay. Uh, you put it a second. Yeah, do it. So, so can you read the motion again? Because it it shouldn't refer to a year. What, what, how did you write that? Uh, yes. so, notice of intent to be Correct, back. but that needs to be done before 24. If no, the permit no, runs no, out. No, this whole year, this of course, starts July 3rd. Okay, yeah. then, all right. If that's clear in the motion. Then, then yeah. I'll, yeah. So the motion is to recommend, to, to advise the select board to Review the list of dam safety engineers recommended by Morris and uh, hire one of them to do the initial notice of intent uh, for uh, in or later this year or in this in this in this calendar year. Uh, does that make sense, everybody? And can we have a second? Second. And can we have discussions? It would draw a when it relates to the date. I'd be specific that they should they should be putting out the RFR RFP right away now, so that they could bring them on board at the beginning of FY twenty four, meaning July first. So that because typically a notice of intent process takes about three months between the legal advertisements and everything. In that, if they got to work on it in July, July, August, September, the mission reviews it, they go back and forth, and then the late drawdown continues. In, you know, so the late drawdown can start the Or it gives the commission yeah, the ability to say, okay, we feel comfortable with this, you know, may take a little time or whatever, or go. Some of the things that are being Request. All right, uh, other because if they don't do that, um, and the commission decides that they're going to enforce the current order conditions, the dam would be um, not eligible or the the late. You know, potentially couldn't be drawn down this fall, which then potentially creates a liability for the town if it results in property damage. The so I have a, I have a question for and it also puts people can I, in. Can I make a comment? 
it also puts people in a situation of, of being in violation of an order. Okay, let's hear some from some other people. Miriam. Thank you. Um, I think we'd have to look at whether or not um, this project could uh, qualify as a limited project. <clears throat> Honestly, um, I think one of the issues would be whether and what the purpose, the regulatory purposes of the notice of intent, because if it is for something like invasive species management, I believe that that might, and again, I, I have to really dig into the regulations a little bit more thoroughly, but I believe that that is one of the qualifying criteria for a limited project, but I think that ice protection might not be. So I think that would be something to talk with the consultants about, they would know, and, and we could definitely have that discussion down the road. I'll just be um, <clears throat> share my concern, which is that, I'm going to turn on my video, that if if this process kind of goes up with the timeline that that Terry is suggesting, I'm just very concerned that it's not going to get concluded in time for the when this permit expires. And I I really share everybody's concern about um, what the what that would mean. Um, so the town has some resources available to it for un anticipated expenses and there that's what it's for there's a cash reserves or free reserves that the finance committee has access to and there's several hundred thousand dollars in that account um, and it's for things like this that can't be anticipated within the regular annual town meeting budget cycle and i worry that if the process is you know delayed and work doesn't begin until after July 1st. I just don't think I, I I'm very concerned that that is not going to be enough time um, because, you know, natural heritage has to weigh in on this and that's going to be a month right there. Um, if not longer, and there may be some assessments that need to get done. I don't know. So what I would like to see the town consider is moving this time frame up, up um, and utilizing cash reserves perhaps or some other mechanism in order to get the work started sooner rather than waiting till July. I just worry that that is not going to be viable and then and then there's going to be some problems for the town and I I don't want to see that happen. Merrick? So I think as part of what everybody's saying basically is this needs to start now. And I think we need to make that recommendation to the select board that, so they understand the importance of starting now for, for however we do this. At, at the, for those who attended the last uh, select board meeting, was there a sense that the, the town, that they were gonna move quickly? I don't think they, no. I, don't, I didn't get the indication that they were uh, Dave, uh, Dave's raising his hand, but he's muted. <laughs> Mike. Hey, uh, Mike not working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So he's not muted. Okay. Um, so I said so they didn't really set a time frame. So uh, again, my question, I, I wouldn't say that I'm sure that they understand the urgency of doing this quickly. And we, they, I think they understand they need to do the notice of intent, but I think we need to add on the urgency of doing it yeah because we don't want to it, it would place the town in violation of an order that exists for a town structure so and it puts these guys in an awkward situation in terms of you know if they carry out what they've been volunteering to do for the town by starting the job you know, it's it it puts it becomes a liability for the town. So maybe the best course of action is for is that I'll contact Becky and and uh, and Rita, and the select board, and and just talk to them about the urgency and see what's going and and make sure it gets on the next agenda. The other thing too is I, I would imagine that I mean it, in the past Moore's 
he's been paid by the town for his services. Is there a line item in the town's budget already related to Dan maintenance or? Presumably, I don't know that. I mean, it must have been paid out of that budget line, whether- Whether there's a line for that or whether it's a professional, like purchase of services line item that's in the town budget. Um, that's under the board of selectmen or under, is it under emergency management? I don't know where right. it was. So I'll also right. add, can find that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Beck, Beck, Beck can find that somehow. He so gets it's paid a thousand a year. It's just like, just like me. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable moving on to the, the next item. I think we, we have a sense of the urgency. We understand. Uh, that the select board needs to move ahead and they understand their, that there's a need to move ahead and not to kind of like have LWAC take care of this stuff in the past like we did in the past. Um, but we have a motion on the floor. Uh, should, should we? Well, it's the essence of Terry's motion was to make sure it's in the 2000, in, in, in next year's budget, 2024 budget. But Miriam is saying, that there is money right now and that she Miriam is recommending or Contom was recommending that we they don't wait for the next year's budget but act immediately with funds that are available. Yeah they and I agree with Mary and well, that's that they really need to act immediately. They're gonna have to expend some monies to do an RFP to put out the request for proposals for the design issue. That needs to occur in this current fiscal year. But my motion as it relates to, you know, whether the NOI, the, I guess the, the, the main part of my motion, whether you want to tie it fiscal year or not to it or how urgent you want to write it, but is that the initial task of the new dam engineer would be to do the NOI? I mean, okay. I understand the urgency of it and it's just how the town figures out how they're going to budget it. But in FY, I think it's in, important in FY24 that they realize if Morris Root is only being paid X number of dollars and you bring this consultant on board gonna have to and that. you're going to do this, like your service level, like professional services for this, going to be billable $150 to up to $250 per hour. The town is going to be seeing the bill for this, I would expect. Related to what I heard with the wildlife reports, those the, the ice analysis on the dam town could potentially be being faced with a bill between fifty and hundred thousand dollars for the engineering services that are being asked. So I suggest that the vote should be adjusted to say that we we make we strongly recommend that they do act on the NOI and hire an appropriate appropriate, whatever the term is, construction company yeah, to do it consultant consult. quickly or immediately rather than put a date for the budget, let them figure that out. But then our recommendation is it be done uh, quickly. Could I make a comment? Please. Yes. Um, so I think this is a, a good idea for LWAC to um, communicate with the select board. I'm glad to see you're doing it. Um, my, my computer's about to die. Hang on one second. My takeaway, I think from the last couple of the select, the CONCOM meeting, and then the um, select board meeting was that I'm not sure the select board completely understands. Um, and I, I appreciate what Terry is saying about the legal exposure for the town. I'm not sure they appreciate that this is a, a, a big issue that maybe hasn't been on their radar, but now it needs to be on their radar. Um, because, you know, I, 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 there were just a couple comments made that, that made me sense, sense of like, well, we've done this a certain way for a really long time. Why can't we just keep doing things the way we've always done them? And I, I felt like that was kind of missing the bigger picture of, um, you know, that that there's some uh, some some problems. We you know the town can't do the drawdown without a permit from the concom. You can't with an order of conditions. So when the order of conditions expires, um, then there wouldn't be a fall drawdown. 
and and that would be a serious thing um which would i was under the impression that that that, that permit is renewable it is probably not renewable um in its current form cat i the commission did not um the the advice of the commission was that because conditions have changed in the last five years that um an extension of that permit was not possible or uh, appropriate now that care you know i whereas mary was that your understanding of what we were saying that because there were needed to be there was new updated information and natural heritage wants to review things that an extension was not going to be possible and you could theoretically in some instances amend an order and then extend it as to two different processes but um amending is only for minor changes not for major changes and because the current order of conditions does not reflect current practice um to incorporate the memorandum of understanding into a new amended order would be a major change which would require a new notice of intent so that was my understanding mary is that yours oh it's mary there hello we lost them i think we lost them yeah oh well, I was oh no talking to you. The peanut gallery. All right, try again. That was my understanding, Miriam. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna let's just quit and try to sign back in because they they didn't like the captain didn't like the answer. Okay, I don't know how much they heard before they lost it. All right, I'm gonna quit and try to sign back on. See if that works. Generator issue. Thank you. I think what we have to do is sign off and sign back on. And so yeah, I didn't start the video too. So we'll go back. I thought I did. Oh, I didn't. No, it didn't start. All right. So yeah, the yeah, owl coming on over again. Three people entered the waiting room. Okay, let's get that. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I can see you and hear you. Uh, thank you. Sorry, it's, it's uh, our generator generator test. That's the last one for the day, though. So we should be okay. Right. Did, uh, so, did you guys hear what I was saying? 
Well, we heard enough, and then Mary basically finished it off by saying that you're, uh, it's essentially not going to be possible to renew that. that uh, so, fine. So, where are we with uh, this? So, I, um, I'm trying to think, is the motion necessary? Uh, uh, because we're really it's kind of referring to the uh, next year's budget. Uh, um, that silence you hear is a generator turning off. <laughs> um, is uh, so do we really need Terry? Do we still need this motion? If we're I, I, I think that to have a formal vote on it, like we have representative from the conservation commission on it in a different town, the innkeeper, you know, everyone that makes up LWAC. I mean, it really, this the intent of LWAC when you look at what the mission is, it, it, it involved dam safety. And I think that it's important that the, with our mission that we take a formal vote on it. Okay, so, so Terry point. does not want to withdraw his motion. So let's rewrite uh, the motion to okay. mean- Or can he withdraw his motion and we just put on another one? Same motion, we'll just fix it. Did you read it? Is it I can't read this. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, L is to advise the select board um, um, to, um, uh, to, uh, we said to review the list and the, yeah, really, to review the list of the, of the dam safety consultants provided by Morris Root uh, mm -hmm. and have them do the initial notice of intent uh, uh, for the next year's drawdown. And they uh, and to do it like and, right this minute. Uh, we need to uh, get that. Yeah. So, the timing on this. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let me just clean it up a bit in terms of the urgency. So yeah, I think it's I think it's important that they recommend. No, that was that was that's okay. <laughs> I did that. We'll come back. Yeah, I think it just needs to say that this immediately needs, this needs to be done immediately. To, immediately. Let's just in, in order to come. It, you know, in well, it just it needs yeah. to be done because we're losing yeah. the jam yeah. seat. And I don't think you need to add all that piece. I think if we just say initially and then we talk to them, they'll have to have a meeting. We can bring all the rest of the issues up then. Oh, I recommend it's just like or that as quickly as possible, they um, uh, hire a new consulting company to uh, work on um, the Dam inspections and, and the notice of intent. Yeah. For uh, so that it, so that the dam can be drawn down next fall as traditionally done. That sounds good to me. Second. Um, all in favor? Uh, any comments on that? All right. So that's I will do. I think we have to do a voice voice vote, and I'll go Terry first. Yes. All right. Uh, Howard? Yes. John? Yes. Mark? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dave? Dave says thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, Dave is the only one that's online. That's, uh, and so, and so that's, that's a unanimous vote. And, and so I will, I will contact the, the select board and Becky prior before we approve these minutes. Yeah, I'm going to do it right away. I'll do it this week and uh, and express that urgency. Uh, and I'll send them. I will call and send them an email. So when you when you talk to them, will we have some kind of recommendation about how this consulting company will be chosen? Terry, do you have thoughts about well, that? Well, yeah, the town the town because it's professional services is going to have to comply with the state's laws for public procurement. Okay. So you typically would put out a request for proposals mm -hmm. for, you know, for, you know, the initial task being the notice of intent related to the, the late drawdown. Mm -hmm. And then, and in reviewing existing dam related um, inspection and report information previous design that we've likely already had we just have to find um 
Okay, so okay, so, so you, you put out a schedule of like what their tasks are, are going to be. And then there's there's actually a formal process that you have to go through, like a ranking mm -hmm. of like you bring. So you get say four right. RFPs and you got to go through a ranking. Score them. So yeah. It's not necessarily who's the cheapest. It's who meets. You have to rank what the criteria is. And I think it's really important based upon what I heard from the compound. And I understand and agree with certain things um, is that you want to bring in a company that can do a full scope of what is being asked. Mm -hmm. So that you're not, you know, so you don't have a consultant that can do the dam inspection, but they got no clue about the wildlife report. Like you want to bring in a company in that does, and Morris has a list, the company, I reviewed the list that he recommended and there's a handful of companies there that can provide that full scope of service. already has that list. Yeah. So in the RFP, all those tasks will have to be listed. Yep. And those, yep. those will have to be communicated to the selector yep. so that they can have that, yep. have that for the and, I, and they don't need to reinvent the wheel per se because there's probably town, I can think of a few that, uh, and, and there's, there's some RFPs out there that could be used as a basis for why don't you why don't you communicate those to us? Okay. So that they'll be available for the, the select board to use. Yeah, because those are probably, you know, those are public. Right. Public documents are most one documents. Okay. okay. All right. Ready to move on? Yeah, I'm ready. If everyone's okay, what's ready to move on to the next item agenda item? Oh, there's a hand up. Tom Seifert. That's Miriam. Miriam. I'm not. Uh, oh, yeah. No, not me. Thank you. Okay. That's Miriam. Miriam, is your hand still up? or Yeah, I just raised it. I'm not going to be able to stay um, much longer. And I know there were might be some other agenda items where maybe you might have wanted to ask questions or wanted me to participate in. So I'm just wondering yeah. if we could yeah. talk about that right now. Yeah, let's go down to item five on the agenda, which I think is the other issue uh, item that reflect, refers to comments from the CONCOM, and that's the, uh, the desire, of LBAC's desire to put a, a voting safety sign on the existing kiosk. Um, and I, you know, was that, I, I think I have to turn it over to, to either Miriam or Mary to provide feedback on that. What was your decision? Um, well, we didn't vote on it. Um, what I did was I reached out to the recre, you know, part of our agreement for the Southbrook conservation areas that we consult and coordinate with the recreation committees and the open space committees. So I emailed them with the uh, signage that you had sent to us, um, Mark. And the response I got back from Penny Jakes was that it was not her understanding that any additional signs off, off the kiosk were um, agreed upon in the past. And um, I just wanted to clarify because my understanding was that this sign was going to extend off the side of the kiosk, not be in the face of the kiosk. Is that correct? That is correct. So, so, so the kiosk can be, can be used for whatever anybody wants to use it for. So now, what I would like, what I would like is to suggest is that um, we put it on the agenda for the next CONCOM meeting and invite open space and recreation to come. So that we can hear what they're, you know, before we put it up for a vote, and then put. So we haven't voted on it, but I think we need to um, have a discussion. Perhaps Mark, you could come to that meeting. Um, I'd, I'd be glad to. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so for today, we're just going to continue this on until our next agenda agenda item. I'll get. Uh, I will attend the. And anyone from LBAC can attend CONCON meeting and provide feedback on, on their thoughts. Again, the purpose of this thing is it's a safety issue on the lake. That, that voters were observed this year going doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And, uh, and mo those voters are people who are not familiar with the rules of the lake. And so the idea of the sign was to increase the safety uh, on the lake by making a sign that's very, very visible to everybody. All right. Any other any comments on the the, uh, the safety sign? Is 
Yes, Terry. Is is the existing there there was on the kiosk the existing voting regulations. Right, but nobody reads it. Yeah, this is a okay. this is a larger sign with fewer words and just hits the main points. I mean, the, the rules of the lake are, are defined in that kiosk, and it's about five paragraphs of stuff. Right. Uh, this is just little three little clauses. Three bullets. Yeah. Go slow. Goes right away. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. We all said on that one. Any other comments? Okay, uh, thank you for bringing that. Thank you for bringing that up, Marion. Um, let's go up to item uh, agenda item number three, which is an update on the uh, Lake Biola Dam Study Committee. And I turn it over to John. Or well, um, so unfortunately, Eric's not. Here. Eric's not here. Yeah. Um, I have what I believe he went before the select board and, and present recommendations, but I wasn't at that meeting either. Okay. There's an email that he sent out saying this is what my opinion is, this is what he was going to do to the select board. Yeah. He did do it. I, I was at the select board meeting. So. Ah. Okay. I mean, if you want me to, I could read this document. Why don't you summarize it since okay. anyone knows? Uh, well, in, in general, he, he goes over the two basic charges of the Lake Wyoming Dam Study Committee, uh, one being public access to the dam, and then the other one being access in general for the town to uh, continue to maintain and operate the dam. Um, the access, I mean, excuse me, the uh, first public access had to do with the safety issues. Um, and the safety issues were it's, the safety of the construction of the dam, but safety of what people are allowed to do out of the dam. So those were the two charges, and he outlines that in, in detail, that that's what we were asked to address. So uh, actions that he recommended uh, consisted, and I believe this is what he recommended, of no parking signs being put up, at least one sign on the west side of Locks Pond Road, and several signs on the east pond, side of Locks Pond Road going up the hill towards the Zaharua driveway. Zaharua is being the property that's right next door to the dam upwards. Um, and we could offer to put signs further up the road if residents want them. And that's one thing he probably discussed with the select board is whether Zaharua's want a sign in front of their house saying no parking. Uh, at the north entrance, that would be closer down to Lakeview Road. Uh, he was going to recommend and the committee talked it over it, adding a state style similar to the gates they use at Quad Reservoir, a gate across there, which would show that uh, we mean business, you're not coming in this way for public act for public access. And uh, also at the north entrance, what I say, and the south entrance replaced the current chain that Howe is using with another similar gate. It would be a swinging type gate, I believe. Much one, of those, like, one of those big yellow pipe things. So much like what's over at the state park, but probably a smaller dimension. Oh. It swings open oh. and, and swings back. And on there, there would be a signage. Uh, let's see what he puts here. Uh, I'm changing the current sign that says use at your own risk to no trespassing, no public access, subject to fines. I think these were suggestions he left for the select board to discuss. Um, and the final wording of the sign will not be determined. So uh, at the south entrance, he wanted one for sure that would you keep the dam keeper parking only sign, that other signage that was similar to what he recommended at the north entrance. Um, then uh, as far as access for Howie and for the town in the future, based on the fact that we now know that Zahru is own the property that we are using for them. At uh, some of our meetings, uh, what's uh, Zahrua's name? What was that name? Ryan. Ryan brought Zahrua. He expressed, and I asked him point blank, that we don't want to sell the property. He thought, he just said, well, I think given easement or given permission would be easier, is what he mm -hmm. said. So, um, so that he, 
uh, Eric has recommended easement or purchase and to have the town discuss that with the property owners. Any easement, he says, must include an indemnification for the Zaharuba family uh, for liability. And it would require surveys, amendments to the Zaharuba deed, which he said the town would have to pay for. Um, any, any amended deeds would have to be submitted to the town would have to, have to pay for that. And to come to agreement with them, exactly, are we going to purchase this or have these? Um, we have our own opinions about that, but I don't, I don't, I think he's leaving that up to the, the town to discuss with Zahru about the positives or negatives of purchasing as opposed to having an easement. Okay. Uh, and about fines, he recommended about fines, possibly having fines and having uh, written on the signs about fines. Uh, but Kristen, who's a part of the committee, was going to check with other towns. Kristen's the police chief. Yeah, police chief. Uh, that are in similar situations to see what they would do. And then he spoke about town approval that the select board would need to discuss these restrictions with the town council. We recommended that they do so and that uh, possibly a town meeting has to take place about easements or purchases and or fines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that sums up what he recommended to the select board. So it sounds like there couldn't be any action that the select board could really take. Well, the so the select board had the discussion, but didn't really have any issues with any of the recommendations, which basically what they presented. The next, the couple of steps that they were going to do is that you know they couldn't put gates up now because of the work that's going to be done on the culvert. Mm -hmm. um, that they could proceed with looking at parking signs. So I think it back to Eric to look at that. Um, Becky, I think, was going to talk with Donna about what would be what we would need to do and would be her recommendation for an easement, a purchase, whatever that that would be. Um, and then also to get back with Kristen, um, she wasn't at the meeting with what the recommendations were, the fines were. So they have some action items for following up on the recommendations and then what would be the appropriate process as we went along for approvals for all of that. So. Um, so basically, they accepted most of the recommendations and are going to do a little more investigation on those particular aspects. Okay. Comments uh, from anybody online? I have a comment, Mark. Okay, Tracy. Uh, yes, I was at the select board meeting where... Um, I can't I can't think of his name. It's just blanked on it. The select board member that's on that that's on the LWAC. Eric. Eric. Eric, yes. So where he was presenting this. And you know, and I I think all of this is a really, a really good idea. One of the things that came up at the meeting is there's there seems to be a concern about um pushback against this idea of of, be, of blocking off the dam access to the public. Um and it was suggested that uh they talk to a few other committees, um, which Mary may have just said to you, but uh, one of the things that I brought up is that I remember when I was on LWAC, we had a concern about all of the walk-ins because it might be overtaxed in the septic system. Um, and those are all walk-in peoples to the beach. So I had just recommended to Eric that maybe he wanted might want to talk to, to Kat um, about that, um, because I don't know if anything was ever resolved on determining if those walk-ins were causing issues with the septic system. I just wanted to make that point. At the beach. At the beach. At, right, at the state park. Oh. Right, uh, so basically meaning that was an additional argument for, cut, for, for, for making no parking there. I guess I, didn't, I wasn't very clear about that. Right, right. There, there hasn't been any kind of study of that, Tracy. Um, there are monitoring wells, and I am, I believe that DEP is, is testing the water in those monitoring wells, but they don't send us the results, so I have to assume that everything's fine so far. That's a very big septic system. I would be surprised if they, even with walk-ins, they, um, they uh, over, overtaxed it. Okay, 
the only problem they had was when they had a lot of water failure from uh, from their water down the well. Right. And that wasn't anything wrong with the septic. It just they couldn't use it. Together. Yeah, I don't I don't remember now what was causing the, the well, well problem. Well, the, the pump failed. Right. And so it, it wasn't filling the tank. Right. It was a mechanical error. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't no. the the well was contaminated or no, anything. There isn't no, any septic no, system no, contamination no, that we know. Yeah. Um I'm a little lost in the, the comment if it did. I don't understand. Are we for or against having no parking signs because of the possibility of that? I didn't. I didn't. So the no parking signs would help. The no parking signs would help. Yes. Because Tracy said right. there was some pushback, and they didn't understand. I just didn't understand. They're talking about feet and places. Uh, Tracy, uh, you came off mute. Yeah. Yes. Well, I was just going to say that. There, there was concern on Eric's part about pushback. Some, some things that he was saying indicated that there was some pushback, and he was feeling like he needed to bring on a few other committees to get, you know, their opinion and their support on this. He even said, "I know that this isn't necessarily a popular idea, and we would have liked to have been able to keep the dam open to the public." So I'm going to assume he got some pushback in some way, and you, you know, he's on your committee, and you can talk to him about that. Um, but I was just expressing that, um, you know, some, some other additional reasons why those no parking signs uh, would be a good idea, not just for dam access. I guess another one that I feel is that when people park there, they're walking up around that really tight corner um, right before Howie's house, you know, and it's a little tough. It's a, it's a little dangerous with people pushing, you know, I got all their gear and their baby, you know, babies in strollers and things. And um, so, you know, that also would be eliminated by having no parking signs at that corner, um, which is just a secondary piece to the dam access. So so what you're talking about is having having other other boards and committees weigh in on the advantages of having the no parking signs. And the, so, and all of the recommendations. And all of these recommendations. Just, right. just, yes. yes. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying that I'm suggesting these committees. Eric was saying that he was going to reach out. Okay. I don't even remember who they were, but I'm just adding in my feeling that um, I, I was wondering about the septic issue because I know we had been talking about it before the pandemic hit and then it kind of we, we never really because there was a couple summers where there was a ton of walk ins and that we were concerned. There was concern about these things. Um, but, you know, then I think it just kind of fell right. away. Um, but, you know, in addition, I feel that the no parking um, in that corner is a really good idea because of the danger of walking from there to the state beach. Um, so there's a public safety aspect. aspect yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And, and just to, so, and just to clarify, the pushback was, wasn't really, it was more concern. There may be people that have concerns about closing the dam. So going to the other committees was just providing more feedback as to how they should present this when they come to a final decision about what they're doing. So it, it, that's basically what. Actually, and it probably be fairly tough to drive the Eric's Park because there will be no public access because when you purchase that land, only if you purchase that land and open it up, you're going to over Zaha Lula's property. Correct. In order to get out there, there's no other way to get. Yeah, the safe. bottom line is, is there's no access. safely safe way to get out there anymore. You know? So actually, it's probably one point of just getting an easement as opposed to the town owning the property. You know, but um, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. And down the road, you know, you know right. what's going to happen. But yeah, as it is, you go. That's the way they walk up. Line. Okay. And they don't own. Town doesn't own that property at the moment. There are signs on the west side. There aren't any signs on the east side, which the dam side. Not, the dam uh, side yeah. But on the west side, they have to have them because if they park there, they're partially out on the road itself. Correct. Right. And so even the when they park on the dam side, adding the sign is because there's too big a space from the guardrail to the first side. 
That might change once the day they don't cover it. It's not right. Yeah, the guardrails right. are going to be different too. Right? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. And, and, and Mary. Yeah. Uh, no other comments on that from online? Okay. Good. Let's move on to item four, uh, which is the uh, just an update on uh, what on the uh, stormwater runoff and the watershed erosion mitigation activities. Um, as we basically nothing's happened again. Uh, uh, FERPOG, which is the Franklin Regional County of uh, Regional Council of Governments, uh, they're out of Greenfield. Uh, they in December received an extension of funding from DEP uh, to continue on uh, to develop a Lake Wyola uh, watershed base plan. Um, since they got the funding, they haven't had time to do anything because they've been just too busy. Uh, but they expect. Uh, uh, in February to continue back on that uh, on that February March timeframe, uh, they already have they have a draft available that and they have got comments from DEP and they're in planning to incorporate those comments and then they hope to have a, an open public meeting period in April uh, um, and uh, so that's about where it says so basically nothing's happening. In essence, they're going to say, we'll give you an update in March where we are. And I see uh, Miriam has a, uh, her hand raised. Hi. Thanks. Um, I spoke, who did I speak with? I spoke with, is it Kimberly? Yep. Okay. So I spoke with Kimberly after our last Conservation Commission meeting um, because I just wanted some more information about um some of terry's comments about um stream restoration projects um as part of a stormwater plan and um the takeaway i got was that perhaps uh two things need to happen one is that um they're going to send the draft report to the conservation commission for comments before the public comment period um so the conservation commission will get a chance to review it and then second um and i i may have suggested this as well is that um i know that last year there was a site visit that was held um looking at fisk brook with lwac um maybe it was in april of last year i wasn't able to go to it um, and I'd like to suggest perhaps uh, having another site visit, but inviting and including some representatives from Wendell, from the Wendell Conservation Commission. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Because uh, I, I, I also spoke with Ward Smith, who's the chair of the Wendell Conservation Commission. I'm sure lots of people who know Ward. Um, and he really wasn't... Uh, up to date on on what the discussions with LWAC were, and I, I just feel as a um, appropriate process if we're having discussions about another town's property, it's just like a landowner, right? We wouldn't want to be doing site visits on another landowner's property without informing them and inviting them and getting their consent. And I I feel like if we're having discussions about land that is part of the Wendell Conservation Area. Um, that Wendell Conservation Commission should be included. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't fully aware that they that the this brook area was going to be included in that in that watershed based plan. Uh, but you're saying that uh, Kimberly said it is. Well, no, Terry said it was. I, I Kimberly did not. Uh, that was well, a comment Terry made at the ConCom meeting. Well, there was discussions that was being was. Okay. What came up was the issue of the beaver dams on Fisk Brook and there, and we all went up there. We saw, I think there's three, three or four beaver dams. And so the question was, is if there's, if there is a, a beaver dam, if there, we have a, 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 a bad weather events and the beaver dams are breached, what's going to, what effect will that have on Lake Wyola? And uh, we had asked, 
I had asked Tamsin, uh, which, which is my contact, uh, if they could include that. And I'm not sure if, it, you know, I'm not sure what she, what she was, the, what the decision was. But the sole question is, if those, uh, the original silt that came into North Cove, North Cove got filled in as a result of, of Beaver Dam breakage back in the 90s. And if that should happen again, what would be the effect? Tracy, you have your hand raised. Yes, I just wanted to say that my um, recollection of both discussions uh, in LWA and in LWAC meetings, um, the need for, they were actually looking for somebody in LWA to um, be a go-between with uh, the town of Wendell for the uh, dredging project that was being proposed by LWA. Um, and I don't think that that ever got anywhere. Uh, they were looking for somebody who knew somebody. Um, and then I know that in LWAC, we were discussing the same thing, the need to coordinate with Wendell because it, you know the mitigation needed to be up further. I also recall that where we landed and it actually went into the annual report was that we were going to pair back, I believe this was Kat's idea, pair back on the larger plan um, because it was having trouble getting off the ground and look at putting in some sort of a silt retention. Um, I don't, I can't think of the, the term um, on the other side of the culvert um, that would be on property that Shootsbury could do something to. Um, we were discussing that, the idea of doing, um, you know, trying to stop more silt from going in um, on land that Shootsbury had jurisdiction over. So that's, I'm just, I'm just putting out there the, the background that I recall, um, but I think that Wendell was mostly involved in the larger project or the idea of Wendell um, being involved was, was definitely discussed. It, Miriam, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, what Miriam referred to is, you know, some interactions um, that occurred in the conserva last conservation commission, I think before, after folks that are involved in LWAC had seen Bell, I stayed on. And the commission was discussing that because of the utility project involving Eversource through Wendell, through Shootsbury, Leverett, that because of some of the work being done with that, that there was going to be, they were looking for large scale mitigation projects to support this. So this is, so I mentioned to the commission of this ongoing study being done by FERCOG involving Wendell, involving Fiskbrook, involving Shootsbury and potentially some of the concerns with the damage that occurred after Hurricane Sandy and different things. Um, and the silt coming into the North Pole historically, that perhaps because some of that property is public property, being DCR, being um, window conservation property, that perhaps instead of looking at little projects, what can we do just in Shootsbury for mitigation as a result of this utility work, look at it a little bit more regionally with the abutting tax. Jerry, so, you said they were looking for a large scale mitigation project. That's who my is, takeaway. Who is they? I didn't know who you meant. Miriam, the discussion, I, is that ever sourced? what you were talking about. Hi. So Eversource is going to be submitting a notice of intent for the transmission line project. And they had reached out wanting and they're soliciting from the Conservation Commission's um, suggestions for mitigation projects. And I have not gotten information back from them about how much mitigation they're looking for, you know, that they're going to be asking for. Um, because that obviously is relevant for the uh, what is doable, um, and I would say you know if 
you know, all options are 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 interesting and and the commission would be look at whatever options are proposed. Um, but if it's anything that might have an impact with Wendell, we would want to have Wendell being part of the discussion before we would probably endorse anything. We'd need to. In my recollection, when this started, Mark, for the discussions and for the more comprehensive stormwater getting for Cog and Ball, Wendell was invited to this going back like two or three years ago. So. Well, I, I think it's great. I think the, the essence is we we're definitely want to involve uh, and involve Wendell in, in these discussions at some point in time. Um, you know, I think there, you said that really the next step is to, is to get a draft of what Burkhardt gets recommending and review that and then uh, and, and, and incorporate these thoughts into, into those discussions. Does that seem reasonable? Quite. Right. Um, and if Goncom gets a copy of this of the draft, and I and we don't, uh, <laughs> it'd be great that it got forwarded to us. Oh, absolutely. It was okay. not, it was not an in place of LWAC. It was just in addition to LWAC. No, and I have no problem with being in place of. But we just want to be supportive here. You know, the, you know, the goal is. To reduce the, the, the reduce the silt coming into into Lake Wyola, and to protect the lake. I mean, and and again, there's opportunity potentially with the con con to reviewing things related to that utility project. But I only brought that up because some of the stuff that Burkhog is working on could be relevant to improving conditions on Fisk Brook and addressing some of the things that we LWAX been discussing for a lot of years with the stormwater, but also it relates to multiple resource areas. You have stream restoration, you have bank restoration potential, you have um, wetland restoration, and all of that is gonna be part of what they need for their utility scale project. So mm -hmm. instead of just focusing on one resource area, on one particular site, you might be able to combine mitigation for multiple resource areas on one site. Could be good. For, and working collaboratively with the bottom tap. So that's the only reason why I brought it up in the ConCon meeting. It was interesting discussion. And, um, and it's something that involves LWAX, again, mission involving stormwater, man, stormwater in. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miriam. Any, uh, uh, any last comments on that, on that subject? Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is an update on dam repairs, and I don't think anything's happening in that area until we get the report from Morris. Uh, and is, is that everyone's understanding? Uh, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. But Morris is going to recommend what, what needs to be done in a report that's due any day now. Um, any comments on dam repairs or any questions on dam repairs? There, yeah, Terry. The, the, the last report that was done talked about, um, and we've talked about this several times, the, the grouting of the pipe outlet, yeah. the weathering related masonry repairs in different things. So. So that's why I say there is an inspection report that's out there since 2016 that was done because those were the latest comments that were, were, were done. And I know Walter had been working with Morris on that. So, um, you know, so that's, but this is why it's important again for the notice of intent and to address the things, some of that masonry repair work is a result of the free thaw cycles and the weather and just normal weather. So, you know, anything that you have related to, you know, ice on the dam and everything is going to exasperate those conditions, potentially damage the spillway um, in the concrete and everything with that. So it's really important. Again, 
we made the motion before, but I can't stress enough from an engineering standpoint the importance of the Board of Selectmen paying attention to this and moving forward for this. It leaves us, it's going to leave with potentially if they don't move forward with the RFPs, leave the town out of compliance with AMC without an engineer. Potentially an enforcement order from the Conservation Commission involving the lake down, drawdown, and and you know, and outstanding recommended repairs to the dam that have continuously been shuffled down from year to year. I think we all agree with you on this, Terry, and I think we've already discussed it really thoroughly. So I would like to move on if we could. Okay, uh, I think the next item on the agenda is uh, it's just an update on ComCom's discussions related to Chapter 91 Doc permitted Permits and Buoys. Uh, uh, either Miriam or Mary? So I don't think we've gotten very far in that. They're still kind of investigating what options could be to look at that. Okay. Um, so there's not really any decisions or recommendations that have come out yet. Okay. Any questions or comments from anybody? Okay, thank you very much, Mary. Um, now, so I'll put that on the agenda for our next, for our next meeting, just keep it going. Um, uh, last item on the agenda is uh, items there's new items, items that we couldn't anticipate and didn't put on the agenda. Any other items? Uh, anyone? Uh, is there anything anybody else wants to raise? Okay, uh, I think we should have a motion to close the meeting then. If that's okay. Motion to adjourn. All right, it's uh, 1040, 1040, uh, 1046 or so, then the meeting is closed. Thank you very much. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Seemed like a long meeting.